Hello, my name is Eric Chappell, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2014 Essentials. And this is the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 14. In this exercise, we are asked to continue the layout that we started earlier in the chapter. So, so far we've done just the northern end of Jordan Court, and now we're asked to fill out the rest of the system for the remainder of the site. We've been given some design requirements, and they're listed in the exercise. First of all, all pipes should lead to this inlet location down here. Um, and I will point out we've been given circles indicating where the low points are and where inter intermediate inlets should be placed. Now normally, in a real design, you don't get the circles that tell you exactly where things should be. That's part of the design is figuring that out. But here for the interest of time and for the interest of focusing on the tools within Civil 3D, um, we're given, given the answers to that part. Um, so everything must lead to this inlet. We're going to exit the system with a 36 inch pipe and an end wall that dumps into this area. So we're looking at maybe placing a pond in here. The pipe should go from 15 inch in diameter to the 36 inch pipe that I just mentioned. So the pipes furthest upstream, for example here and here, should be 15 inches and they'll get larger as we go downstream. Now we're going to kind of arbitrarily pick where they change size, but really you would do some uh, hydraulic calculations to figure that out um, and size the pipes based on engineering principles. Anywhere where a pipe goes outside the right-of-way, uh, we're going to put a manhole uh, to bend the pipe so that it can stay within the right-of-way. And we also want to put all this stuff into the profile view so we can view them because it is so useful to view that design in profile view and it's useful to construct it as well. So it's all, uh, any, any design you work on is going to involve plan and profile view for any pipe, any pipe work that you do. So let's get started. I'm going to first launch the pipe network creation tools. I'll call my system Storm2. Make sure I use the Storm, uh, storm Sewer Parts list and that I'm referencing the Road FG surface. And I'm going to start out along Madison Lane, so I'll choose that as my alignment. Not worried about labels just yet. I'll click OK. And I'm going to start off by just laying out inlets. So I'll choose my curb inlet. But I also want to, uh, even though I'm not going to do pipes just yet, I'll go ahead and select my 15-inch pipe. But here I'm going to change the, this command to structures only. I'll go ahead and drop in my structures. Don't have to worry about order too much because I'm only putting in structures. I'm not connecting them yet. Sometimes it makes sense to go ahead and do the pipes and structures at the same time. I think this this uh, this particular design is it's kind of obvious how it's going to be connected. But just to kind of do it by the book, so to speak, I'm going to put the structures in first. Then I'm going to orient them. So I'm going to rotate the structures so they're aligned with the road properly. Makes it nice and easy when they're perfectly across from each other because you can use those grips. But when they're not, like this guy, sometimes you have to use other things. Now I've got these labels in the drawing that I can uh, snap to, which makes it pretty handy, but you usually don't have those either. Here I don't have anything really to snap to, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball this one. But in a real design environment, I would be more precise about that. I think these are uh, close enough together that I can use the grips. Same thing with these guys. Because they're perfectly across from one another, that little grip trick works quite well. And then these two up here. Let's not forget those. Okay, so now we're ready to add pipes. Now one thing I learned to be careful about is um, to make sure that I'm, I'm getting the right feedback as I'm creating the pipes. And here's what I'm talking about. I'm going to zoom in nice and close and make sure that I'm seeing the glyph here. In fact, I'm going to turn off my O-snaps make sure I see that little yellow glyph that indicates that I'm connecting to the structures. And a visual indicator that I've connected is I actually see the pipe get cleaned up. It appears like it's been trimmed at that rectangle. So watch, watch for that. 
Here's a spot where I know I'm going to need a manhole because I'm cutting right through the middle of lots 32 and 33, but I'll take care of that later. It takes me down to this inlet here. And here, instead of jumping across the road and then crossing again, I'm actually going to end it by hitting Enter. And then I'll start the command again, pipes only, and I'll draw in this direction. I'm always drawing from upstream to downstream. And one thing I did forget to do was change the pipe diameter. So this first, we'll say this first two pipes are 15 inch pipes. I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the pipe size here using the swap part command. I'll change that to 18 inches. I'll change this one to 18 inches. This is just handling a small amount of area, so that can actually remain a 15 inch pipe. But for the next pipe, I'm going to use 24 inches. So just like a typical design, you're going to mix creation and editing commands together. Here's another area where I know I'm going to need a manhole because I'm chopping across lot 63 and 64. I'll change my size again here to 30 inch. Again, this is kind of arbitrary where I'm picking where the sizes change. In a real project, you would do this very precisely with some engineering calculations. And then for this last length of pipe, I want to do the pipe and the structure. And I'm going to change my structure to a head wall for a 36 inch pipe. I'll start it here and I'll end it. I'm not really sure where the actual outfall is going to be, so I can just guess for now. I can always move it later. Once I decide where that pond is going to be, I can you know, grab the end wall and move it around to the location it needs to be. I'm going to guess it's probably going to be further down, um, but that's for another time. So that takes care of the actual layout. I need to add some, uh, some manholes to create bends. So to do that, I'll change my structure to a storm manhole, and I'll do structures only. And again, I want to watch my visual cues. I want that little glyph here that indicates that I'm breaking the pipe and adding a structure to it. Now I can move the structure into the right of way. Not sure if it's going to give me the, the bend that I need. It's pretty close. Maybe if I move it, I'm going to go ahead and say it's okay to move it out in the road like that. See that pretty often. So that takes care of that one. Here I've got a little problem with uh, with it going out in the road, so I'll do the same thing. Structures only. We'll put a manhole right here. That gets it into the right of way. And then obviously we've got a problem there as well. So I'll click a spot, just any old spot. Click the manhole and I'll drag this one out into the street as well. And that gives, gets everything into the right of way. And it looks pretty good. One thing, I, what I was just looking at is we don't want the storm pipe to run right under the curb because if something were to happen to it, we wouldn't want to have to tear out a bunch of curb to get to it. So I want to make sure I'm not doing something like this uh, where the storm pipe is running right under the curb. All right, that's, that's not going to be good for maintenance purposes. So that's why I pulled it down this way a little bit. I mean, some of it is under the curb, but most of it is not. Alright, so that takes care of the layout part. That really takes us down to the final step, which is to show all this stuff in profile view. So let me zoom in on, uh, we'll look at Jordan Court first, and actually I just realized I missed a few pipes. I'm going to switch back to 15 inch, and then we'll do pipes only. And uh, I'll go from here over to here, switch it to 18 inch and go down to this guy down here. All right, now I think we have all of our pipes and structures in place. So now I've got some additional storm um, structures and pipes along Jordan Court. I want to show those in my profile view. So I don't typically want to show them right across from each other because they would just overlap anyway. So I'm just going to pick one in the inlet there, pick a pipe. I'll pick this inlet here and this pipe. I've got the manhole, another pipe, 
and then this inlet here. And just for fun, I'm also going to pick this manhole. I'll do the draw parts in profile command, select my Jordan Court profile view, and they magically appear in that profile view for me. I didn't include this pipe, maybe I should. I'll go ahead and draw that in as well. All right. We've also got some pipes along Logan Court and Madison Lane. Let's do Madison Lane next. So here's Madison Lane. I'll select um, the pipes and structures along Madison Lane, except where they're duplicate one across from the other. And that should take care of that. Draw parts in profile view. Looking pretty good there. Now we'll do Logan Court. This structure is actually outside of the alignment of Logan Court. You can see it's not in the it's not in the projected shadow of Logan Court, so I'm not going to pick that one. I'll pick this one and this pipe. And this manhole and this pipe. And I think I can pick up this inlet as well. So this inlet pipe and manhole were shown already in the in the Jordan Court profile view. We can show them again in the Logan Court profile view. That's perfectly fine and actually uh, preferred. So I'll click here and we can see all those structures listed in the Logan Court profile. So very cool stuff. We've laid out the system for the remainder of the project. We showed it in profile view where it needed to be shown and we did it relatively quickly. Um, 12 minutes in fact. So it's amazing how quickly you can generate design in Civil 3D because of the power of the tools that it has. So that concludes the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 14.